Hey, thanks for joining me and welcome to the Less Academy. Now, what we want to do today is to install our WordPress fresh install onto our local host. So we want to create an environment where we are able to locally develop and work on our WordPress website. And for that, we're going to use a very, very powerful system, a very powerful software, and it's easy to use. And you know, you don't have to deal with a lot of problems. It's got a really, really great user interface. And I love great user interfaces. It's got a modern look and the bonus of it, which is why I really like it, is that it allows you to create live links so that you are able to send whatever you're working on maybe you want to show your client what it is that you're working on you know and uh, they want to see the progress and stuff like that now you don't have to put it on a live server you just send them the link and say okay this is what i got or maybe you're working remote with a different team you know and uh, you want to show them and you want to collaborate easily with them so this will allow you to do that and you don't have to go through extra steps. It's literally a click of a button within the software. This is why I love it. So without further ado, let's jump right into it and uh, let's get it done. Hey everybody, welcome. All right, so our problem is we want to be able to do WordPress development on our local host. How do we go about doing that? So there are many famous options um, such as using MAMP and so we have MAMP, uh, which is MAMP and MAMP Pro. We also have XAMPP, which is this one. And then we also have, so if we click that there, we also have desktop server, which is, uh, is it the name? Yes, this one right here. So how do we go about doing that? We want to create our website, but we want to do it locally. We want to do it on our machine. Um, the things that we we'll need probably uh, we're looking for something that gives us uh, easy installation and easy way to work through certain things. Now, I have used MAMP for quite a long time. It's, uh, it, you know, it does the job. It, it works well, um, but I feel like that it, it, uh, it's a little bit, um, it takes you through quite a few things that you need to do in terms of setup. And I've also used SAMP. Uh, which is also goes through the same thing. I've used desktop server a little bit, um, but um, I find that it, it it's okay. I, I suppose all these are okay. Um, you can go through them and then you can see which one, which one it is that you want to use. But uh, the one that I recommend is local and you find it at localwp.com. Now this is very good. It's quite lightweight and it's got a it's got a good user interface. And a bonus which it does um, is that it gives you a live link using ngrok. Right? So ngrok. So it's this sort of thing. So um it uh, allows you to, for example, if you're building your local website, right? And you want to show people who are not necessarily on your desktop, maybe your team is somewhere else, especially in these days of remote, your team is, uh, a, a, you know, one of your developers is at another location. You can't really do that with a local, uh, local host. You can't send them your local host link to say, look, this is what I'm building. What do you think? Um, you and if you want to do that with MAMP or XAMPP or these other ones here, uh, last time I was using them, it seemed that you need to go through a, a whole sort of process just to get you to be able to have a live link. Um, and certainly, if you want to use this with NGROC, you can do it, but you'll have to go through a certain process of setting it up and all this sort of stuff. So if you want a good modern way of creating, of developing your WordPress websites on your local host and have the ability to have a 
live link that you can send to people so that they can view then this is the best option and this is what i recommend and this is what we're going to be using in this uh in this tutorial so the only thing you have to do is you have to download it and you go to the normal download process and uh, you know you choose your platform you choose windows if you got windows you choose mac if you have mac and all these other ones right here and just fill in your details and that should be okay it will give you from here it will give you a download link and then you download the software and then after that it will both go through with you the setup process which is your normal setup process for installing software so it gives you an option to save your uh, websites in whatever directory that you want um, i usually save mine in my hard drive my external hard drive which you can certainly do that but uh, just go through the process normally the way you would any kind of process that you're setting up okay and then once you do that you just open it and it will be something like this okay so here i've already got some websites on it and the one side is running but let's say you want to set up another website i'll show you just how easy it is okay now my websites are located if i just go to my websites are located here local site and this will be the you, you give this and then it, it will save all this in there so literally i gave it this address local sites this folder to save in everything and then what it does it fills it with these sort of things here so you have this sort of stuff going you have your config you have your mysql you've got your php in there uh, you've got your php any etc etc right and that's it that's where i save it but but you can actually save it on the default location that it has asked you it will pre-fill it and then it will ask you to save it here and then you just click run go you know and then you just have those the the, the settings that are being recommended to you you can certainly use those and once you've done that you just go to add a site so add new site and you call the site whatever you want to call it so we're gonna call ours no that's a bait let's call it i'm gonna give it one of my uh my agency name which is onai and it will give you a, a local site domain right like that and here it's telling us this is what this is the link that i was telling you you can browse that and then choose to save it wherever you want to save it now i don't want to this is the local sites is the site that they give you this is the default location that that it gives you to save your websites but let's say i don't want to save my website in there i want to save it in a custom which is my hard drive and then i want to save it in here okay so i give it just this one local sites and then i say select folder okay and then do you use don't use a blueprint or use a blueprint right we just continue oh it's already taken by another site oh yes so so basically um i've got a site in there now let's 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 just say something like new folder and then um on i and then give it this folder here and then go forth so here you can save it as uh just the recommended environment which is php7 um this i don't know how to say this word nings it's just a weird word really um, and then you've got your mysql version or you can choose whatever you want a certain php that you want a web server that you want whether it's that or apache and you can save you can take the certain database but you can just go with the preferred one and you can just continue and let's give our wordpress username we can call it root and then this one we can give it a couple 
of uh, a, a password and then your WordPress email which is important for you to put in because if you all of a sudden lose your password you don't want to be going into MySQL and changing things which is long so make sure you give it a correct and don't go for the default email like this just go for the correct your correct email address in fact let me give my info at dot com and if we go down here is it a multi-site or it's not a multi-site so if you're creating a multi-site you just click that one if you if it's not you just leave it as the default no and it starts to create the site folders provisioning services it might prompt you uh, for security to for you to accept um you know it needs your permission as as an administrator of your computer and there we have it our website is uploaded it's set up it's live right now and to test that we can go here view site and then it will take us directly to our own i.local okay and you obviously want to log into that wp.admin and then we give it our root and then our password that we set and then we log in and there we go that's it that's how you set up a local development environment for your wordpress now again remember we talked about having a live link um so right here we can say enable live link now um ngrok has got uh, free version and paid versions and the free version it, it just um it it's, it throttles you so you might be able to send a live link and it might seem like it's not working or it might not work because you've been throttled um, but it, it does work um, so if you copy that let's just see if it's gonna work for us or it's gonna complain there we go so send this link right this this link here is shareable you can share it to somebody and then they can look at it they can take a look at what you're doing etc etc um and it just makes everything really good everything uh sharing development with other coders and other or whoever is looking at your website or project management it makes all that stuff easier instead of having to go into code and try to set up a live link from your development server and all that you don't have time for that i completely understand so there you are that's how you set up your wordpress on a local and how you're able to share a live link to the people you're working with thanks for joining me and don't forget to like and subscribe so that many other people can see these videos and get this information see you in the next video